Okay, last part, and I'm going to go through it pretty quickly. And this has to do with the uh, interactions between dislocations, or the forces acting on dislocations, the, the petsch kohler equation. So before we said uh, F equals tau B, right? F acts perpendicular to the dislocation line. Um, we're going to look at this a little more carefully. So since the dislocation line moves on its glide plane, we only need to consider the shear stress on this plane, right? So the traction on the glide plane. And so stress components normal to the glide plane don't contribute to any dislocation motion. Only the components uh, in the direction of the Berger's vector on the glide plane are going to contribute to motion. So we can say the force on the dislocation due to the stress field is going to be the projection of the stress onto the Berger's vector. This is going to give us a vector force, a, 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 a basically a traction vector, right, on a plane that is orthogonal to the Berger's vector crossed by the line length because the force is always perpendicular to the line length and that's uh, right that gives us the force on the dislocation and that's the petsch kohler equation sometimes you'll see it written as g cross l but i always like to think of it as just sigma dot b cross l so oh these are out of order Okay, I'll fix this on this on the slide. So, oh no, this is just sorry, it's not out of order. <laughs> um, this is just talking about the force on an individual dislocation caused by an external uh, stress. So this is the stress field. This is the Berger's vector. This is the line length. And here, if we have a edge dislocation that's parallel to the y-axis, our dislocation line is here. Our Berger's vector is along the negative x-axis. Right. So if we think about the uh, shear in the z-x plane, so shear going this way and this way, right? That is what's the shear that's going to cause our glide force. Right? Shear in the y x plane right, doesn't cause any force on our dislocation line. Right? And shear uh, x, the normal force to the x. Uh, right, that's going to cause um, an upwards force on our dislocation line, right? But that's out of the out of the uh, glide plane, right? But that basically that's our climb force, right? And that climb force uh, is going to bias our thermodynamic potentials, right, and make it easier for vacancies to jump in or out and move that plane uh, up or down. But you can think about how the force is acting, right, what it's trying to get the dislocation, what the stress is going to get the dislocation to do by considering the petsch kohler If we do the same thing with the screw, here we have a line direction going this way with a Berger's vector uh, it, along the negative x-axis, line direction along the positive x-axis, right? So zx shear, right, that component of stress causes our glide force, where shear in the y-x plane, this causes us, this is going to cause a... Um, tendency to induce cross slip to move from one from primary slip plane to a secondary slip plane and 
the normal, the xx component, that gives us no, so forces along the dislocation line, right, make no contribution. So only the only when g is acting perpendicular to the line length do we get force, right? Okay. So now forces between dislocations. <coughs> we can also use the Petch-Kohler equation to describe the effect that one dislocation has on the other. So the force due to the interactions with uh, other dislocations is basically the sum of the Petch-Kohler forces of all the other dislocations in the system. All right. So here we have two edge dislocations. Dislocation one produces a stress field, right? There's an elastic field around this dislocation. Dislocation two is going to respond to that stress field, right? In the same way that dislocation one is gonna to respond to the stress field caused by dislocation two, right? So the Petch-Kohler equation gives us the force acting on dislocation one due to the, pr dislocation two due to the presence of dislocation one, right? We have to be careful that we use a consistent convention to describe directions of the Burgers circuit, the line direction, right, start and finish and all that. But if we do that, uh, we can compute the interaction. So the most straightforward interaction is between parallel screw dislocations, right? So here we have uh, two screw uh, dislocations with that are parallel to the z with their line direction is parallel to the z axis right and they have burgers vectors of course that are parallel to z but they're arbitrary in direction right it could either be positive or negative so we know what the stress field from dislocation one is right there's our stress field we want to project that take the onto the burgers vector for two that gives us this g vector then we're going to take the cross product with the line length for two so the stress from one burgers vector and line length from two and that gives us the force right and we go through that and we see that repulse that if the screws have the same sign then we have a uh repulsive force, the force is positive. If B1 and B2 have opposite signs, then this force becomes attractive. All right? But it's a pretty straightforward procedure. You'll do it for homework. We'll do some exercises in class. All right? And that's it for today. Okay. Have a good one. We'll talk we'll uh, do another video next week.